नमस्ते आई वेलकम ऑल माय डियर बिलोड एस एस एल सी स्टूडेंट्स एंड ऑल द व्यूवर्स ऑफ चंदन वाहिनी फॉर टुडेज संवेदा ई लर्निंग प्रोग्राम क्लास स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द लास्ट सेशन इन चैप्टर सिक्स लाइफ प्रोसेस सो स्टूडेंट्स आर यू रेडी विद यूर टेक्स्ट बुक एंड नोट बुक टू नोट डाउन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स ओके लेट अस रिकॉल फर्स्ट वॉट वी हैव लर्न इन द लास्ट क्लास स्टूडेंट्स in the last class we discussed transportation process and in detail we have studied transportation in human beings blood vessels different types of blood vessels we studied and their function also we discussed human heart and also we discussed circulation of blood in heart blood and lymph also we discussed in the last class so let us see what are the important concepts we are going to discuss in this particular class students the main learning points we are going to discuss today transportation in plants excretion in human beings structure of kidney functional unit of kidney then artificial kidney nothing but hemodialysis and also we are going to discuss excretion in plants students first let us study transportation in plants in the last class we discussed in detail account of transportation in animals similarly in plants also this transportation is one of the essential life process in plants the transportation is very simple when compared to animals in plants the conducting tissues mainly xylem and phloem they play very important role in transportation of water and food and minerals so remember students xylem and phloem are the main conducting tissues that is present in plants students one question for you how roots absorbs water from soil at the roots cells in contact with the soil actively take up ions this creates a difference in the concentration of these ions between the root and the soil water therefore moves into the root from the soil to eliminate this difference so students by this hope you understood how roots absorbs the water from the soil now let us discuss transport of water in plants as i told you xylem is the main conducting tissue which play very important role in transportation of water and minerals and students in this xylem tissue the movement of water is unidirectional students what are the different types of cells present in xylem yes you are right xylem composed of mainly four types of cells tracheids xylem vessels xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber so out of these four types of cells only xylem parenchyma is the living remaining three are non living now one question for you students how transport of water and minerals takes place in plants we all know that xylem tissue play very important role and xylem tissue possess different types of cells and vessels and tracheids of roots stems and leaves are interconnected to form a continuous system of water conducting channels reaching all parts of the plant water and minerals enter the roots by diffusion process and then due to transpiration the suction force helps in the upward movement of water and minerals students this is how the transportation of water takes place in xylem what do you mean by transpiration yes you have studied this in your lower classes yes students you are right transpiration is the biological process by which excess of water is lost in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plants observe this diagram students plant roots absorb the water and minerals from the soil plants require only a small percentage of water for their photosynthesis process remaining water gets evaporates through the aerial parts of the plants such as shoots through the leaves etc students have you heard about 
transpiration pull yes you are right transpiration through stomata creates a vacuum which creates suction and this is called as transpiration pull this transpiration pull sucks the water column from the xylem tubes and thus water is able to rise to great heights in even the tallest plants now one question for you students what do you mean by ascent of sap students upward movement of water and minerals from roots to different parts is called as ascent of sap next one more question what is the importance of transpiration yes you are right transpiration helps in the absorption and upward movement of water and minerals dissolved in it from roots to the leaves and also it helps in temperature regulation students apart from this we have studied transpiration process plays very important role in exchange of gases now let us discuss about transport of food in plants specialized tissue is present for transportation of food and that is called as phloem you can see the picture of phloem tissue here students phloem is responsible for transportation of food from the leaves to the other parts of the plant and the transportation in phloem is multidirectional remember it takes place multidirectional way what are the different types of cells present in phloem yes students you are right there are mainly four types of cells are present in phloem tissue sieve tubes in this picture you can see the sieve tube next very important cell is companion cell which is present very close to the sieve tubes phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers out of this sieve tubes and companion cells play very important role in transportation of food remember students in phloem cells only phloem fiber is a non living one remaining 3 are living type of cells students can you tell me the answer for this what is translocation where does it takes place yes you are right transport of soluble products of photosynthesis is called as translocation and it takes place in phloem one more question for you students how transport of food takes place in phloem of course in phloem due to osmotic pressure water enters the phloem and helps in the transport of food in plants how is the continuity of water column maintained yes you are right the continuity of water is maintained by adhesive and cohesive properties of water the adhesive property of the water molecule make them adhere to the xylem walls and its cohesive property water molecules remain together and move up as stream so remember the continuity of water is maintained mainly by adhesive and cohesive properties of water observe this picture students here you can observe the first picture xylem vessel and the second picture is the phloem vessel by looking at this picture can you note down few differences between xylem and phloem all of you know the first difference that xylem conducts water and minerals whereas phloem vessel mainly play very important role in the transportation of food that is the first difference all of you know this apart from this one more difference here you can see in xylem vessel the movement is unidirectional or it is one way mo movement only whereas in phloem vessel it is two way flow there is no requirement of energy for the transportation of water and minerals whereas in case of phloem it requires atp or the energy for the transportation of food next very important thing in xylem the transportation is mainly by the process called transpiration whereas in case of phloem transportation is called as 
translocation process. In xylem vessels, no end walls between the cells, but in case of phloem, you can see a small perforations called sieve plates present in between the sieve tubes. You can observe this in the in this particular picture. Students, now we are going to discuss very very essential life process that is excretion. So, there are many different types of metabolic activities that is taking place in our body and of course, when these metabolic activity is taking place lots of waste generated, especially these wastes are nitrogenous waste which are in the form of urea, uric acid, ammonia etcetera. What do you mean by excretion? Excretion is a biological process by which an organism get rid of excess or toxic waste products of metabolism. So, remember excretion is a process of removal of waste products and this excretion takes place even in unicellular organism, even in multicellular organism which is an essential type of life process. This excretion process removes unwanted byproducts of metabolism toxic chemical substances. It is also very helpful in regulation of the ionic concentration of body fluids and also it regulates water content of the body and regulate pH of body fluids. Now, one question for you students, what are the different types of waste eliminated by living organisms? There are different types of waste are eliminated by living organisms. Let us see the answer. The different types of waste eliminated by the living organisms include ammonia, urea and uric acid. And based on the type of waste eliminated, we can also classify these organisms into mainly three types, amnotelic, ureotelic and uricotelic. We know that this excretion is essential life process in living organisms. Now, let us discuss how this excretion takes place in unicellular organisms, also in different organisms and animals. Students, in unicellular organisms like amoeba, this removal of waste takes place by simple diffusion process. We know the reason, we discussed this in our uh, previous classes. In lower multicellular organisms like flatworms, they use flame cells while earthworms use nephridia for excretion. Higher animals like fishes, frogs, lizards, birds and humans use kidneys for excretion. Students, different organisms possess different excretory organs. No one question for you students. What is homeostasis? Yes, homeostasis is the tendency of the physiological system of higher animals to maintain internal stability of the body. One more question for you students. What are the major waste products produced by the human body? Yes, your answer is correct. Carbon dioxide and urea are the major waste products produced by the human body. Students, in this chapter, we are going to discuss human excretory system and different parts of the human excretory system. Also, we are going to discuss the structural and functional unit of our excretory system. Students, you can observe this particular picture. Yes, this is human excretory system. Our excretory system organs includes mainly a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder and a urethra. These are the important organs which are present in our excretory system. The main organ of our excretory system are kidneys. We possess a pair of kidney which are bean shape in structure which is located on either side of the backbone and are protected by the ribs and muscles of the back. And each human adult kidney has a length of 10 to 12 centimeter and a width of 5 to 7 centimeter. 
and each weighs around 120 to 170 grams. Students, you can observe this picture. In this picture, you can observe apart from kidney, you can observe the pair of ureters, urinary bladder and urethra and also you can see the two types of blood vessels that is renal vein and renal artery. Students, one question for you. What is the function of the following renal artery and renal vein? As you have observed in the last picture, renal artery it brings the impure blood containing waste substances into the kidney, whereas renal vein it carries away the pure blood from the kidney. Students, now let us discuss the main functions of the kidney. First function, yes you are right, purification of blood by removal of waste products is the most important function of the kidney. And remember the main waste products are nitrogenous waste, especially urea and proteins like creatinine are the main waste products which are present in our blood. Kidneys not only acts as an excretory organs and also control the balance of water and mineral ions in the body. These kidneys helps to regulate blood pressure by secreting few hormones and these kidneys helps to maintain healthy bones. It activates vitamin D so that it will easily absorb the calcium present in our food. Kidneys produce erythroprotein hormones that helps in the production of red blood corpuscles. So, students these are the very very important functions of kidney. So, kidneys are essential organs of our body. Students can you answer this question what is osmoregulation? Yes, you are correct. Osmoregulation is the process of maintaining the right amount of salt, water and ionic concentration in our body. Students, each of our kidney contains millions of structural and functional unit which play very important role in excretion. Can you guess what is the name? Yes, you are right, it is nothing but nephron. You can observe the picture of nephron. Millions of nephron present in each kidney. This nephron mainly consists of three parts. One is two layered cup like structure or C shaped structure that is nothing but Bowman's capsule and which is connected to renal tubule. Again this renal tubule divided into three parts. One is proximal convoluted tubule, U shape structure called Henle's loop and distal convoluted tubule and last part is collecting duct which is connected to the ureter. This C shape cup like structure which is double layered is called as Bowman's capsule. Inside the Bowman's capsule it contain network of capillaries and this network of capillaries are called as glomerulus and one end of the glomerulus is attached to the efferent arteriole that brings the impure blood to the kidney. Students, you can observe in this picture, one end of the glomerulus is attached to efferent arteriole which brings impure blood to the glomerulus, whereas the other end is attached to efferent arteriole. Efferent arteriole takes the blood out of the glomerulus. The Bowman's capsule connected to the renal tubule which is a tube like structure and it is mainly consist of three parts, proximal convoluted tubule, U shape Henle's loop and distal convoluted tubule. Remember students, this nephron are considered as structural and functional unit of our excretory system. Students, now let us discuss what are the stages of urine formation. Yes, urine formation has mainly three stages. First one is glomerular filtration, second one is 
selective reabsorption the third one is tubular secretion let us discuss one by one the first one is called as glomerular filtration during glomerular filtration blood flows in glomerulus with the high pressure and because of the narrowness of the efferent arteriole it undergoes pressure filtration or ultra filtration so another name for glomerular filtration is ultra filtration or pressure filtration all small solutes and water filtered out and now entered the bowman's capsule the product is called as glomerular filtrate or nephric filtrate this is the first stage of urine formation next stage is selective reabsorption now the nephric filtrate travels through the tubular part of nephron this nephric filtrate is also called as primary urine and when it transported through the tubular part peritubular capillaries which are present around the proximal convoluted tubule reabsorb all the useful components of nephric filtrate and this process is known as selective reabsorption students now the liquid which is left behind the tubule is called as urine students during glomerular filtration both useful substances as well as unuseful substances gets filtered and present in the filtrate so these useful substances has to be reabsorbed by the body so this reabsorption takes place when the filtrate travels through the tubular part and this process is called as selective reabsorption because only useful substances reabsorbed third stage is called as tubular secretion when the filtrate is circulating in the distal convoluted tubule some important salts are actively added to it and this process is known as tubular secretion the filtrate with the urea and other waste materials pass through the collecting tubule and through the ureter it is temporarily stored in the urinary bladder and it is now called as urine this urine collects in urinary bladder our urinary bladder we have we know that it's a sac like structure which can collect approximately 400 to 450 ml of urine students do you know this term micturition what do you mean by micturition yes it's the act of releasing the urine from the urinary bladder it is called as micturition it is accomplished by simultaneous contraction of smooth muscles of urinary bladder wall and relaxation of the skeletal muscle of sphincter of the bladder into the urethra students an adult human excretes about 1 to 1.5 liters of urine per day the urine has straw yellow color and slightly acidic with the characteristic odor and it contains mainly urea creatinine and very little amount of ammonia and uric acid students those who suffer from diabetes in their urine sample glucose in and ketone bodies also found students you can observe in this picture one instrument can you guess what is the name of this instrument yes you are right this machine is used in case of kidney failure and this artificial kidney or machine is used for this particular purpose an artificial kidney it's a device to remove nitrogenous waste products from the blood through a process called dialysis and this machine is used in hospitals for the treatment of patients whose kidney is completely failed next let us study excretion in plants of course these plants does not possess well developed excretory system like human beings but still the waste generated during different metabolic processes has to be expelled out of the plant body and this takes place through several parts of the plant let us discuss one by one yes students in plants the gaseous waste products produced during respiration and photosynthesis are removed through stomata 
and excess of water is also removed through the stomata by transpiration process. You can observe this stomata we have discussed in the first session stomata play very important role in exchange of gases. Of course, the gaseous waste products mainly expelled out or removed through the stomata. Even excess of water is also removed through stomata by transpiration process. Some waste products are stored in the leaves and removed when the leaves dry and falls off. So, waste products accumulated in the leaves and because of the wilting of leaves or when the leaves falls off these waste products are removed from the plant body. You can observe here gums on the box of the tree even latex also you can see in the stem and uh, gums and resins also produced on the box of the trees. These waste products are stored in the old xylem vessels and comes out in the form of gums and resins from the plant. And some waste products in plants are stored in vacuoles also and some waste products as I told you like gums resins will come out of through the box or stem of the plant. Some of the waste products are removed through the roots. Students till now we discussed detailed account of transportation in plants also we discussed excretion and excretory system in human beings. So, now are you ready to answer few multiple choice questions? Students first question for you name the organ that converts ammonia into urea in higher animals. Options are skin, pancreas, kidney and liver which is the correct option. Yes students you are right liver is the main organ that converts ammonia into urea. Plants use the energy stored in ATP to accomplish the process of transportation of options are water and minerals, oxygen, waste materials and food which is the correct option. Yes you are correct food is the correct option. Next question the biological process by which excess of water is lost in the form of water vapor from the varial parts of the plants is grafting, photosynthesis, condensation, transpiration which is the correct option. Yes you are correct transpiration is the correct option students transpiration is the correct option. Students now I am going to give you few questions for homework all of you write down these questions and answer these questions. First question define excretion, second question what are the differences between the transport of materials in xylem and phloem. Third question describe the structure and functioning of nephrons. Fourth question, why some substances reabsorbed after glomerular filtration in nephron? And a fifth question, what is transpiration pull? What is its effect? Students write down these questions and answer these questions. So, students in this life process chapter, we mainly studied four important types of pro life processes that is nutrition, respiration, transportation. Today we discuss the last important type of life process that is excretion. So, thank you students. Namaste.